New Hinox, right on, here on the map. I remember marking this back when we originally uh, discovered Gut Check Rock, and I believe I avoided it. I was trying to avoid trouble at all costs, and so we marked it and never fought it. Ah, Hateno Village, home sweet home. Hello, Thad, how are you doing? You still need something? Uh, show me around. Ha. Not likely. I'm on guard duty, Buster. Serious business. No time for tours. Ask me for tours. <clears throat> Sorry about the yelling and the grumbling. This village is pretty peaceful, so it's not like guard duty is all that heroin. But you're gravely mistaken if you think people with free time are itching to give village tours. Try looking for a burly old guy called Selby. He'll probably fall over himself to show you around. Well... Thanks, Thad. That's as good a tour as I really wanted. Hey, guys and gals, I'm Paladin. Welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Last time, we read Daruk's diary and filled out something that I didn't think I would get 100% on. We filled out the Hyrule Compendium. Look at this thing in all of its compendium glory. You can get things like the Silver Coat Fox, which I didn't even know had a, its own listing. In case you want to scry for these? What really impressed me was that there are unique variants of birds that have that each have their own different listing so I could imagine someone making a Pinterest account and taking and doing wildlife photography in game I've seen it for Pikmin 3 it there's actually some pretty impressive art or uh, photos in uh, Pikmin 3 forums go and look I actually have a playlist for my desktop that runs off of that and there's some pretty good photos uh, what was I saying oh yeah but there's an interesting listing over in the monsters page where is that? Oh yeah, in the Yiga section, there's a Yiga foot soldier, a Yiga blade master, Master Koga, so you would have had to take a picture of him when, when you fought. But finally, there's a, I believe, a spoiler, Monk Maz Koshia, the arbiter of worthiness for the hero who wishes to control a divine beast, following a revelation from the goddess Hylia. As the last part of the final trial, the monk offers a challenge of ancient techniques. I believe that this is preluding the end of the Master Trials. I get they're not- are they called the Master Trials? The DLC Pack 2, you know what I mean. Otherwise, uh, there's nothing particularly enlightening. I'm glad they kept our Dinral picture because it's gorgeous. Uh, and in the weapons section, it's cool to see all the different variants of weapons, especially the ones that we just didn't use that often. Uh, the Silver Great- uh, Silver Longsword we did get a lot of use of, and is particularly one of my favorite designs of weapons. Uh, but then there's also listings like the, where is it, the Bow of Light over here. Prince Zelda gave you this bow and arrow for the battle with Dark Beast Ganon. When wielded by the hero, it fires arrows of uh, pure light strong enough to oppose the Calamity. You get to see things like that. And otherwise, I, there's nothing. It's cool to see all the different variants of shield that are uh, functionally the same. But they're, they're localized for their particular region. They have all these different cool designs. Like this one, uh, I believe is the... Is that the goat from Toilet Princess? I believe it is. Yeah, it just it just needs to see. We have the kite shield that's always disappointing because you think you can fly better. But I don't think you actually can. And yeah. Uh, this episode, in case you're wondering what we're doing. If we go to the map, you'll see that we have 96.74 percent completion that'll be bolstered up to probably about 98 uh, once we get all the Korok seeds which I'll get uh, more on that later but also if we go over to our side quests we have 77 of 90 completed meaning that we're just knocking on the door of 100% completion uh, one of those quests I know I believe I have to destroy my Hyrule shield so I've been using it throughout the adventure to try and destroy the thing but it's pretty indestructible uh, and that will let us reforge it but this episode mainly, we're going to be talking to the people of the final three villages of the game, being Hateno, Luralin, and if we have time this episode, which I believe we will because Hateno is fairly cleared out, going over to Zora's Domain, which I, I think has one quest that we have yet to conquer, maybe more. And then at that point, I can feel free to look up the list, the master list of quests, and start knocking them out one after another. So, Luralin Village. I don't think we're going to be spending much time here. In fact, why are you pushing my horse? You are a strong man. Whoa, pretty. Whoa, I haven't seen that blue flame in a long time. That's Praz, right? I haven't seen her in a while. wonder how she's doing. 
This is totally unrelated, but this village has its fair share of beauties, huh? Like Prima, Tanpu, and... I bet that Pura, Pura was a looker when she was young, too, you know? Well, I, I wouldn't say, because that would make... That would be, mean I was breaking some laws. <laughs> wow! Hey, hey, where can I get that blue thing you got there? Oh, it's the woman. The wife. What a nice breeze. It doesn't carry that tang of salt on it, though. What do you mean? Oops, I forgot we just met. I was reminiscing about my hometown of Lurlin Village by the sea. The view and the air are different here in Nintendo, but this is where my wonderful husband calls home. I count myself lucky to be able to live and work beside such a wonderful, loving man. <laughs> Lurlin Village is a small fishing community far to the south. I've lived there before I moved there, moved here with my new husband. We had to cross the bridge of Hylia to get here, weighted down with everything I couldn't bear to leave behind. Thinking back on it, it's a wonder either of us survived the trip. What a pleasant woman. Sure enough, I was right. I spoke to everyone in this village, and not a single person had anything new to say nor a quest to give. This is one of the more... the more traversed of the villages for me. And besides besides the the uh, blue flame dialogue that we found, as, as well as me lighting up the entire town with the blue flames, it looks really great at night. That's everything new that the village had to offer. So, with that out of the way, let's warp down to Luralin Village and complete a quest. Luralin Village, the fresh salty air, the ocean breeze, and the perfect mixture of shade and sun. <sighs> oh. Hey sir, haven't seen you around. You sightseeing? Sightseeing? Huh, you haven't heard? There's a special place they say you can find your true love. Folks come from all over to visit, hoping for love. It's the Lover's Pond on Tuft Mountain. Why don't you go check it out, mister? I, I actually did. I actually did. Did not find love, though I, I helped facilitate it, I guess. There's a travel over there. I do remember there is one person here that has a quest. Of that, I am I am 100% certain. I thought those were bomb barrels. I am 100% certain of that fact. In fact, there there she is. Let's talk to the child first. Kino, I hope dinner it. I hope dinner is seafood pa paella paella. It's so yummy. Ah. Are you a traveler? This is Lurlin Village. We're a small fishing pr town, and we're proud of it. My husband is a fisherman, and I have two sons that will, who will probably grow up to be fishermen too. Uh. What should I cook for tonight's dinner? Uh. Make your seafood paella. It's so pa paella. I'm gonna call it paella. Paella. It's so good and yummy and great. That settles it. I'll make some seafood paella. Uh -huh. Yay! We seem to be a bit short on ingredients, though. We'll need goat butter and a hearty blue shell snail. I'm so busy with housework that I don't have time to go shopping for ingredients. Oh, I know. Could you go and get me the ingredients we're missing? Sure. Really? I'm so happy to hear that. I'll be waiting. Do I have those? We need a we need goat butter and a hearty blue shell snail. I might have those as I <laughs> flail around. We have a hearty blue shell snail. Do we have goat butter? We do. Hello. Uh, I have it in my pockets, actually. Oh, you have the ingredients? Can I please have them? Of course. All right, I'll take those then. Now to start cooking. Here's a little something. Since you found the missing ingredients, why don't you eat with us? It'll be done soon. Oh, that's cool. We get to stay for dinner. That's awesome. Can we meet the other kid and then the husband? That, that'd be sweet. Seafood Pela. No fish fisherman's birthday bash would be complete without this top shelf seafood dish. Huh. It's a birthday dish. <laughs> Go on, dig in. It's delish. What's for dinner? Complete. Very easy quest. Very easy quest. And now it's 70 and 90. I am actually going to eat it right now. Boom. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm eating it. Rum tum tum it fills the tum and it's not dumb. <laughs> it's not wow. I had my my quest sensors. My Xenoblade X sensors were tingling. I sensed that this man had a quest. Who, are you a traveler? I'm a, a fisherman of this village, but we're bit a, in a bit of a bind lately. Monsters have taken over the best fishing spots. 
You used to be able to pull in a good haul at Eris Beach, but these days you'll be lucky to leave there with your life. You look pretty tough. Think you could go take care of him? I've already done it, apparently. I can't believe it. You took care of the monsters at Eris Beach? It's been so long since I've had any fish from those waters. Thanks, mate. I suppose I should give you this to show my appreciation. Wow. <laughs> Come back whenever you'd like. I'll share the day's haul with you. Ooh. Eris Gray is a great place to fish. Check this out. If you see a bunch of fish gathered around a reef, sometimes you can find treasure hidden down there. Wow. Two quests! Two quests for the price of one! Actually, it was the price of two because we completed two quests. Is there anyone else what, since we're on a roll? Man, these, these houses are so sweet. I love them. I, I know it's not really possible to have this kind of house in, especially Washington weather, but I, I want to have a beach house one day. That'd be sweet. That would look just like this. It just seems so open air. I mean, it's not very private, but it's relaxing. <laughs> Haven't you heard? There's this really interesting spot at Palmore Beach. I went there with Gar Garini before, and it was so exciting. They said it, they were ruins or something. Hey, mister, are you interested in old stuff like that? Of course. <gasps> then I'll take you out there. Follow me. Uh, I am going to follow this guy in the off chance that it's a quest that I can just complete by walking up. We're not there yet. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> We're not there yet. Well, we are now. Those are the ruins. Ah. See ya. Man, all that work for nothing. Oh. Well, would you look at that. Palmore Cove, or Gamma Cove, has a new stone talus. We walked right by it. So while that, that little kid didn't lead us to a new quest, it, he did lead us well on our way to completing one. Because if you remember, we need to get every stone talus in the game. So this, this is good. This is a new stone talus. Oh, I don't have a bow. Uh, the bow. I wonder if I could, I think I, I'm gonna try to do this old school. Oh, look at that. Boom! Spin around. Boom! Look at that. That was such a cool combo. I didn't even know you could do that. I'm using that. From now on, I've actually been playing uh, Breath of the Wild. I've, I've been playing Master Quest or Master Mode with Ryan. And we've been doing we've been doing tandem Breath of the Wild with on the Switch, where I hold the right Joy-Con because I know how to shield bash and do all these cool stuff, and he holds the left Joy-Con. It's it's surprisingly it's surprisingly uh, functional. You can do a lot of cool stuff, and it it's a great way to play <laughs> tandem Breath of the Wild. It, it, it's it's actually fun. I, I'm trying to convince you to do it because you should. If you have it on the Switch, I guess you could do it with the Wii U, but if you have it on the Switch, try it. It's a blast, and it, it adds a new layer of complexity to and teamwork. But yeah, I've been playing that, and I'm going to use that strategy. That's, that's sweet. Take all the time you need to choose a chest to open, look, listen, smell, taste them if you think it'll help. He did say, he did say I could do whatever I want. <laughs> and I'm doing whatever I want. <laughs> ah, this, this is actually pretty fun. That's all there is for Lurlin Village, I believe. I've spoken to everyone. There weren't that many people to talk to. Just one or two, and both of those people had quests. So now with that, we're going to be going to the very last town in the entire game, Zora's Domain, and clearing out the last few quests. Link, I must thank you. You somehow overcame the objections of the old geezer on our council, all to help save our home. Yes, you are a treasure of a Hylian taking time out of your journey to come to our rain and monster ridden home. And here you activated those orbs with shock arrows, freed Ruta, and released my sister from her lingering regret. Link, I simply can't thank you enough, especially for following me to the end, pushy and unreasonable as I am. 
Oh. Zora's domain would still be in peril if not for you. You're welcome here anytime, and we are ever in your service. Have I mentioned how incredible you are and how thankful I am? Because you are, and I am. Yes, you sir, you are the greatest of Hylians and my most treasured friend for all time. My name is... What's his face? Um... Oh, Flint Cragley Pilgrim. Hmm. Hey. Hylian, to think that you were able to appease Ruta, you turned out to be a pretty incredible guy. In fact, I wonder if you can do this, too. <laughs> Exterminate the Hynox by Rallis Pond. Surely. Okay, in that case, give it a try. For he who saved the domain, this should be a piece of fish cake. Go on, I'm counting on you. Giant of Rallis Pond. Hello. Uh, Hiya. Hmm, that stench. Did you perhaps... Oh. Apparently we killed it. Did you perhaps defeat that Hinox by Rallis Pond? Yep, that's me. What? You really did? I, I just... I can't... Wow. Th thank you, really. I knew it. The champion who saved the domain is in a whole other league. Please, take this. Consider it a small token of my Im immense gratitude. I guess you beat me in, in dealing with that Hinox. I... I really want to get stronger. Wow. They say Ruta has calmed down, and yet... Ah, it is you, Link. I am sorry. I was talking to myself. The truth is, my wife May left me and has not come back yet. After the Divine Beast Varuda started rampaging, she went out to go fishing like everything was normal. And now, Var now Ruta has settled down, but she still has not returned. I am afraid the worst has happened. If only I had stopped her from leaving. Oh, what do I do? I'll find her. Link, you saved Zora's, Zora's domain, and now you are going to help me find my Mei as well? Uh. You are a true champion. I am sorry to put this burden on you, but please, bring her home. My wa a wife washed away. Yet another quest. Sagan. <laughs> Sagan? More like Sagan. <laughs> am I right? Um... <clears throat> I, I, I respect you as an elder and a scholar. Where could she be? The day Ruta started raging, she said she was going fishing in Zora River. Ruta's rage caused the river to swell. She may have been swept down in stream. However, if Leto's group didn't see anything, maybe she passed through the Zora's River and is beyond there. Worst case scenario, she could have been carried all the way to Lake Hylia. Do you have any more questions? No. And I believe it is with Lake Hylia that we will begin our search. I just saw a Zora around that corner. I do know that there is one here. There she is. Big catch, big catch. We got a big haul today. Fishing is so much fun. Do you know Franck? Hmm? Franck? Yes, he's my darling. My love. Why? Is something wrong? What? My darling, I'm sorry. I completely forgot. I got so carried away. I, I, I've got to get home right now. Here, you can have these. Did she just forget that or she left her husband? Oh, poor woman. Okay, now they're all yours. Now then, time for me to go home to Zora's domain. See ya! I, I thought that that was her. A wife washed away complete. Let's warp back to Zora's domain and collect our sweet rewards. Good day. After we... Last met, my darling gave me a good scolding. He said I shouldn't go wandering about anymore for a while. <sighs> I suppose that's only fair. She uh, seems like quite the free spirit. Now to find her husband, who has been worried sick, and see what he has to say about the whole affair. Hey, Frank. Link, Link! My wife, May, she came back to me. I cannot possibly thank you enough. But I shall try. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, truly. Well, the five stamina bass were reward enough, as well as getting to meet his very interesting wife. Oh. Wow, another quest. Oh. Link, it seems that I was wrong about you. Seeing Divine Beast Varuda for Ruda's form there. Even though we lost Lady Mifa, it seems she can still help you fight against Calamity ah. Ganon. I'm so sorry that I did not introduce myself sooner. I am Giotto. I am a historian who studies Zora history and preserves it for future generations. Mm. Look at that smile. 
Even so, the stone monument that King Dorophon supposedly wrote, it's torn to pieces now. Most likely, the ten stone monuments? I thought there were like three are in the same awful condition. I'm thinking about collecting the contents of all the stone monuments and collecting them into a book. But with these old legs and fins, traveling to all stone monuments, will all ten, will take a great deal of time. That is why, Link, I'd like to ask a favor of you. I'd like you to find all ten and ask me and tell me what they say. Oh, thank you. You're truly a lifesaver. How are you assuring that the champion will search for those divine monuments for me, or for those monuments? I have it on good authority that among the stone monuments, one has the location of some treasure written on it. If you happen to find said treasure, feel free to keep it. It will most likely be something that Azora wouldn't need. Yes, you'll find the t st ten stone monuments around Zora's domain. I believe in you. In fact, I'm counting on you. Wow. Getting quests left to the right. Future Pal's gonna have a field day editing these down. Huh. That was awkward. The first location of the very first, because apparently these are in order. Stone Monument number one is here, and we're going to read it. History of the Zora, part one. The eternal Zora's domain as told by King Dorifon. The rains have blessed Laneru since ancient times with an abundance, abundance of pure, clean water. Seeking a bounty of such water, the Zora gathered here. Thus, as the legends go, the domain was born 10,000 years ago. The land was also rich in ore, and so a unique form of stonemasonry was developed to create our new home. The domain is one giant sculpture, a feat of art architecture that has drawn admirers the world over. Our great domain will ever stand as a hallmark of the esteemed artists who made it, an eternal symbol of Zora pride. Right across that same exact gorge, actually going backwards, apparently is number two. History of the Zora, Part 2. A reservoir of hope as told by King Dorophon. Once every one, uh, ten years, the Laneru region experiences unusually heavy rainfall. The Zora River flooded every time. The tides damage not only our domain, but our people, washing away poor souls and causing great suffering and disarray. The Zora King at that time, of that time, after seeking aid from the King of Hyrule, rode out to see what could be done. By joining the architectural genius of the Zora and... Hyrule's technological prowess, East Reservoir Lake was swiftly built. Thanks to this fruitful partnership, Hyrule was no longer plagued by these devastating floods. In gratitude, the Zora King promised the King of Hyrule to manage the reservoir level to protect all of Hyrule from floods. Each Zora King since has kept their oath, spanning 10,000 years. That is why the reservoir signifies our bond with Hyrule. Miracle of the Zora, Part 3. Miracle of the White Scale is told by King Dorifon. Our scholars say that in the distant past, Zora's domain had a king with no special talent for the art of war. What he lacked in skill in, with a blade, he made up for in love for his people, especially love for his queen. One day, news reached the king of, uh, the king of a horde of monsters gathering in the Zodabon Highlands. The king steeled himself for war to protect his people, but the queen knew how ill-suited for the task he was. Worried for his life, she wove one of her own scales into his armor, hoping that her love would protect him in battle. It seemed that for a time the tide of battle favored the Zora, and that all would make it safely home. But the cunning Lizalfos general saw an opening and seized it, driving the king's forces into a corner. When the general's sword was ready to crash down upon the king, a miracle took place. An errant sunbeam reflected from the scale on his armor and blinded the Lizalfos, stopping the death blow from falling. This was the chance the king needed to rally his forces and turn the tide, taking down the general and securing victory. This came to be known as the Miracle of the White Scale, a scale that only female Zora possess. It was this miracle that began the tradition of Zora princesses crafting armor for their future husbands. History of the Zora Part 4, The Light Scale Trident, as told by King Dorifon. The queen and I were blessed with a daughter as lovely as a jewel. We named our princess Mipha. To celebrate her birth, the smithy Dento presented Mipha with a gift, a mighty spear called the Light Scale Trident. Mipha grew into a bright girl and soon reached the age of receiving lessons from the royal family's order of knights. The whole of the royal guard adored her, especially Sar uh, Sergeant Segan, who loved her as if she, was hi she were his own kin. Under Segan's instruction, Mipha honed her skills, and her radiance grew along with her skill with the Light Scale Trident. 
As a champion, Mifa made her people proud. However, once the Great Calamity struck, she was never to return. All of Zora's domain fell into misery. The merest thought of the princess was enough to overcome anyone with tears. As a way of offering her soul repose, they tried to send the light-scale trident drifting down the Zora River. But when they did, the trident began to glow, and Mipha's voice rang out loud and clear for all the Zora to hear. The light-scale trident and I are one. Abandon your grief and know joy once again. Do not cry. Just remember. And so, keeping to her request, on the day of the Great Calamity, the day that Mipha passed from this world, the Zora venerate the light-scale trident and remember their brave princess. Such is the origin of the Champion Festival. Part 5. The Sage Princess Ruto. As told- Oh, Ruto! As told by King Dorifon. Long, long ago, in a past more distant than even the Great Calamity or the creation of the Divine Beast Varuta, there was a Zora Princess- Whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind that. The Divine Beast was created after Ocarina of Time? That's a development. That's an that's a new development. Huh. There was a Zora princess named Ruto. We know that she was an attendant to the Zora patron deity, and that she was a fair and lively girl, beloved to all. Around that same time, an evil man with designs on ruling the world appeared, bringing disaster upon Zora's domain. It is said that Ruto then awoken as a, awoke as a sage, facing this foe along with the Princess of Hyrule and the Hero of Legend. Her accomplish, accomplishments are remembered not only by the Zora, but they are also forever etched in the history of Hyrule. The Divine Beast Varuda, built ages later to fend off against the Great Calamity, was named in honor of Ruto. That the Zora Princess, my sweet daughter Mipha, was chosen to pilot Ruta is surely a work of fate. Part 6. When the Divine Beast Varuta was first discovered as, at Zora's domain, my daughter Mipha hurried to, spe to see it. Those present that day said that, say they saw an unusual sparkle of excitement in Mipha's normally calm eyes as she beheld Ruta. The princess spoke of the Divine Beast as she would a friend and was overjoyed when she was chosen to pilot Ruta. I thought nothing of it at the time, but given the events that followed, I now regret allowing this to happen. I have spent many long years consumed by guilt. My dearest wish is that her soul will know peace. I pray for it every day. I was wondering why this particular monument was hidden. Now I don't. His of uh, Zora parts the he defeated the light as told by King Dorifon. There was a time when the people of the land were threatened by a dreadful beast, Lynel, who lived on Ploymus Mountain. But Luan Hylian drove the beast back and restored peace to the domo domain. The Zora Helm was in this fight. The Zora Helm won in this fight in the north of the. near the ruins near. It rests there. In the depths of the lake? Time has taken its toll on this. History of the Zora Addendum 1. King Dorifon stands his ground. Around 100 years after King Dorifon ascended to the throne, a strike guardian crossed upland Zorana into our domain. The Guardian seemed unstoppable. Our best soldier's spears barely left a scratch in its metal, on its metal hull. It was then that King Dorifon, without a thought for his own safety, came out to face the Guardian himself. With supernatural strength, he lifted the Guardian and hurled it into a ravine. The impact of, its fa of the fall left the Guardian in pieces, uh, and it was never able to trouble another Zora ever again. The citizens celebrated the King's valor. From then on, their trust and respect for him grew beyond compare. You can still see the scar he earned on that day on his forehead, a token of his triumph. Addendum 2, Prince Sidon's Great Escape. There was once a giant Octrok in Hitano Bay, large as a mountain. Okay, which terrorized the village's fishers. Fishers? Fishermen, you mean? Hearing of their distress, the Prince Sidon went forth to personally eliminate the offending Octorok. But this Octrok was a tricky beast. After the prince dodged one of the stones it spat, it inhaled him whole. 
Such has been the fate of many strong warriors that went to slay the Octorok. Not one has come back to alive. But it seems just as Prince Sidon would be counted among them, the giant Octorok twisted in pain. The, tw the tip of a silver scale pe spear pierced the Octorok's stomach from within, revealing itself as the source of the beast's agony. Incredibly, Prince Sidon had fought his way out by stabbing the spear over and over into the monster's stomach. Unable to bear the pain, the Octorok coughed up the prince and scrambled to escape. Ever since, the fishers of Hitano Bay have passed down this heroic tale, the prince who slew the fell Octorok. I believe we've read that one. That's one of the few that we have read. And now, onward to the final one. Apparently, according to the, this guide I'm reading, which is telling me the locations of each of these, we need to speak to him one last time in order to find a hint about the tent. Hmm, Link, eh? What's wrong? Are you unable to find all of the stone monuments? I can perhaps tell you the location of a stone monument you have yet to investigate. Tell me. I won't need to roll the dice of hearts for this one. The remaining one is here. At the southern, southeastern cliff of Upland Zorana. Would you like me to check again? No, that's fine. And I guess, I guess he'll give us hints as to all of them. So yeah, we need to head that way. Memoir of a Gifted Stonemason. What an honor it was to receive a personal request from King Dorophon to craft a historical stone monument. I did not realize how much content he'd give me, though. It certainly exceeded the, the line limits of a single monument. I suppose I sh could have just shortened the text, but it felt wrong to tamper with our great king's words. Thankfully, I was able to split it all between seven monuments to ensure that every word was preserved. I have always prided myself on my ability to think outside the box, and I am so very adaptable, and humble as well. While I was at it, I thought, why not add two of my own? So I created one for King Dorophon and one for Prince Sidon. True, this was outside the scope of my commission, but I believe their triumphs deserve as much. But why stop at that? Why indeed, my achievement surely deserves remembrance too. That is how the commission of one became ten. Of course, having increased the number of monuments, I had to find places for them all. That proved difficult. Still, it is worth it. As long as I remember to sign these monuments, my name will be remembered forever, as it should be. Report your findings to Giotto. Link, it would seem you have checked all the stone monuments for me. Now then, please tell me what was written on them. Uh... Hmm, the history, culture, folklore, and various heroic acts of the proud Zora people. It's all here. Eureka, thanks to you, I've compiled the precious information from those stone monuments. Link, thank you for taking, such an ardu taking on such an arduous task. Please, allow me to reward you. Wow, diamond. And... Quest number 82 complete! And that, hopefully this episode wasn't too long. Future Pal, please do your best on this. As opposed to all the other times, you don't do your best. That's not what I was insinuating. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. <sighs> Boy. Next episode is a, is a special one. It's a special one. We're going to be working on the last quests, I think. The last quests. But first, we're starting with Korok Seeds. I know normally, for the past however many 50s and 100 of ep episodes, I've saved those for the end slate. There was a time where we did them during the episode, and then they just got too cumbersome as I started collecting more and more, and my eye for getting Korok Seeds improved. And we also got the Korok Mask, which has helped immensely. We relegated those to the end slate, replacing the beautiful vistas and just the normal uh, end slate affair. And we've done that. But it's now, this next episode, if you watch me warp here, you will see that we have 867 Korok seeds. 867 of 900. And then you'll see that if I pull out my map and zoom out, I guess I am already zoomed out. Every leaf and every beacon, uh, except that one. That one is not a Korok seed. That is just uh, me placing one to help me find all of the monuments. Every beacon and every leaf icon on the map is every Korok seed we do not yet have. And there are 33 of them. That's right. 
accounted for are all 900 Korok Seeds. And join me next episode, where this will be the focus. We are going to be getting all 900 Korok Seeds, reaping our reward, and 100 presenting the hardest collect-a-thon I've ever seen in a video game. This takes the cake over Donkey Kong 64. This takes the cake over Ocarina of Time. Oh, and my goodness, this takes this take takes the cake over Okami. And I did it. Or rather, I'll say I did it next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Join me next time where we do that, and then also start knocking out the, the last remaining quests on our docket. I'll see you guys then.